Today's review is about the RT82 Plus. The Plus means that it does have the GPS option. The Retavis RT82 is a dual band VHF UHF radio doing FM analog, also digital mode DMR. It is compatible with DMR tier 1 and DMR tier 2 and it is waterproof IP67. This radio is probably one of the most I'm radio friendly DMR Chinese radio on the market today. And with this radio, you can actually set it up so you're able to go in VFO mode and actually change manually frequency while you're out in the field. The same thing as you can hit it and add a memory as well for digital or for FM operation. So this is a very important uh, thing for AM radio since most of the time those DMR radio are only comfortable by a software but this is not the case of the Retivis RT82. Even though it looks very similar as the MD 2017 from TYT, this radio is slightly different from its look but probably sharing the same electro electronics inside. Uh, the code plug are compatible with the two radio, but the main difference between this radio and the TYT is the fact that Retevis, they actually found me on the web. They actually contacted me asking me if I could do a review of the RT82 Plus, and they are really, really eager to do business with AM Radio. They want to develop their market, and if you go on their website, there's actually a special tab for amateur and they are really, really eager to get your business. So that's mean in the future, you're probably gonna see more radio, I'm radio friendly radio coming out of this company. So for me, and uh, they were very proactive sending email and if I had any question, so that is pretty neat. Also the sell direct and they have a warehouse uh, in many countries. In Canada, me, it came in about three days after uh, they told me they sent me the radio and um, it came from Mississauga, which is close to Toronto in Canada. So it took a very, very, it was a very short uh, time delivery. So that is pretty neat. So you can check out their website for uh, their warehouse. So we will proceed with the review and we'll be back after for a conclusion. The first thing you need to do is go to the manufacturer website and download the software and the firmware. You can download uh, an AM radio firmware experimental that has here that I will test as well and you can download the CPS software, the programming software here and the other firmware over there. After you download the firmware and software, it is a compressed file so you uncompress and you will have two directory like this. Here's the directory for the CPS program, okay? And the other directory is for the firmware. There is two version. There is one version for the GPS optional radio and there's also a version for CSV for 100,000 contacts DMR you can upload or you can have the other firmware let you uh, record voice. Then you also have the, the um, the firmware update software over there and I also downloaded the EXXT which is the alternative firmware that you can use and then you just upload using this. Before you can upload the firmware you need to put the radio in firmware update mode. You hold the top button with the PTT and while turning it on. If you don't do this you may have some issue then you see both firmware that I use in my video. Now, open up the software, you turn on your radio. The first thing you need to do is read the radio for its config. This is very important. 
And when you're done, make sure you save it and put it aside, just in case, then you will have the original config with you. So you just save that file. The first setting you need to do is you go in general setup. We only do the basic config over here. We won't go uh, up to a config a repeater and everything, just the basic config. So you put your DMR ID, your call sign. You go here, make sure you put it in frequency mode. Otherwise, you won't be able to go in VFO mode while using the radio. You can use an alternative text when you start on or a picture like I did. And make sure to uncheck this box here. Otherwise, it's make ch channel changing very long. And if you don't need it, better uncheck that. In the menu there, you can add, uh, you know, what you like. By default, it's this. You can add the GPS. I also customize my buttons so it's more easy for me to use the radio. So I use like the power select. Okay, you won't see the button on top, but it's power select. So you can see me here changing this. And this button here, I use it to change VFO. And here I, I use it for up down channel and to navigate through the menu. Another thing, you need to set up VFOA and VFOB, VFO frequency, starting frequency. And then you can do the basic setup and like for a hotspot or whatever. So you'll be able to switch easily. Then you upload or transfer the config file into your radio. It'll take a little while, so I will short it out. There you go. Magic of video. And it will come back on. To go in VFO mode, you need to be in memory mode. In memory mode, you don't have the name of the frequency, but you hold the back button and it put you in VFO mode. With the common firmware, you can actually enter the digit and you will go into that frequency. In the other software, the EXXT, it's not the same. And then you can also have a different DMR ID, which is pretty useful. And you can program the radio manually, edit the channel, add a channel. This can be done in digital and in analog as well. So this is a cool feature, although it's much easier to do it with the CPS software. If you go back into channel mode, then you will have the name of the frequency, but you won't be able to go back into, into uh, VFO mode. With the other software, the EXXT, the alternative software for AM radio, you can go in VFO, but you cannot enter it direct into the keypad. You need to switch with the button. Also, with the CSV version and the EXXT version of firmware, you can actually download from DMR Mark all the DMR ID and you can upload it. The first thing you need to do is import it into this here, this way from the, the main menu on top not in the contact list and it will give you a file that you need to edit. It won't work automatically when you download it. So you need to manipulate the file. Maybe I can do a video in the future about this, but just showing you how to import export CSV file. Then you turn on the contact CSV into the radio and it will look up into that database every time it receives something like you can see right now, my friend Jean-Francois VA2SS. I did try the GPS, it's working, but I did not use it in DMR yet. Maybe I can do another video about this in the future. VA2, AV testing, testing 1, 2, Victor Alpha 2, Papa Victor. VA2, PV testing, testing 1, 2, Victor Alpha 2, Papa Victor. Victor Alpha 2, Papa Victor, testing, VA2, PV. In conclusion, I really like the RT82+. Plus. You know I like all my radios, <laughs> but I do really like the Retevis RT82+. Plus. This is a very fine radio and I highly recommend it for somebody who wants to get started in digital communication. This radio will do the job along with the analog FM dual band uh, radio that you can use on any repeaters. 
also you can bring this radio out in the field and you won't be stuck you know because you don't have the software to program it and you need to change frequency you will be able to do so manually i also like the fact that i can upload all the dmr id uh, database into it and uh, i'm able to see all the call sign of the hands that transmit so this is a, a cool feature as well hope you did enjoy this video and if you like please do a like please subscribe and this is important if you want to support this channel just subscribe share with your friend for now i'll say 73 and catch you some other time